So the, the pressure they put on the rim, obviously, you know, a lot of free throw attempts for them in this one. How, how do you kind of roll with those punches throughout this game and just the speed and penetration that they play with and still keep them at arm's length for most of the game like you guys uh, The pressure didn't come from the penetration. It came from the back cuts. Uh, so it's just they do a great job of when you're trying to be in shifts. If you're up a little bit too high, they back cut you. So that's where they get their offensive rebounds. That's where they get their uh, they put the pressure on the rim in that way. And so um, I thought the end of the third and the entire fourth quarter, our body position was tremendous. But I thought we had some where well, they were able to back cut us a little bit. And so um, it's a good thing to learn from. Jalen's game tonight, a little bit of a slow start, picks it up late, you know, forces some turnovers. Uh, what do you make of his play tonight and overall his disruptiveness defensively this year? Do you think that's been more on him or have you guys kind of put him in a different position to succeed on that end, the system you guys are playing, stuff like uh, that? I think it's both. I think uh, just growing in our system, growing uh, in our relationship is about how we could be uh, just better, all of us. And so he's taken it upon himself to uh, understand ways that he can impact the game other than scoring and really taking pride in being a two-way player, being a cerebral player as well as his physical abilities. And so... Because of his work ethic and his mindset, he's able to do that. So, in, in in a game like tonight, like even if it's not going well, quote unquote, offensively, his ability to rebound. I thought the two plays he made in the first half, where he tried to take the charge on Holmgren, and then he got the block at the end of the quarter, which saved the which saved the basket at the end of a quarter. So, like when it might not be going as your expectations offensively, how can you impact the game? And he's taking pride in that. Joe, how would you describe Kristaps' uh, impact on this game tonight all around? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a credit to him because of his physicality and his dominance. Um, but it's also a major um, teaching point for our team because we had the discipline to attack the switch the proper way the entire game. And so if teams are going to switch us that way and we have a physical presence right there, like we didn't have any turnovers on post passes. We had very few turnovers in the paint if they collapsed. Our spacing was rather good if it was a post mismatch or if it was in the middle of the floor. And so they tested our discipline to attack the switch, you know, uh, with size and physicality. And uh, I thought our guys did a great job of trusting that, which allowed us to open up some other things throughout the game. Is there still kind of some learning going on as to who this team is when you're whole, when you have you know, everybody and kind of figuring out everybody's tendencies and, and the way you guys want to play moving forward? No, not at all. I think the learning just comes from how teams guard us differently. So you saw you know, they went zone for a couple of possessions. Uh, you know, so I think the learning comes from as the game starts or as you play teams different times, um, you know, what are the answers to the different uh, problems that the opponent is giving us? And tonight it was switching and physicality. And uh, for a team that is first in turnover percentage to only have 11 turnovers is uh, a testament to the spacing and the decision making that the guys made. Joe, a lot of the box or game charts, I should say, nowadays kind of look like mountain rangers. Like you guys go up big, the other team goes in a row, and then you guys balloon the lead out again. Like tonight, 16 point lead in the second quarter, and they cut it down. Then you guys manage to bring it all the way back out to 25. What is it about this team that allows them to respond to other teams' run so well? And is it the offense, the defense, is it a mix? Just ballooning leads out? Like uh, I mean, it has to, it, it's both. The game's connected in that way. And so. Uh, just understanding the ebbs and flows of a game. There's natural runs. There's natural variants within a game. And so having an awareness to uh, why the run has been made, um, having an awareness to uh, how to stop that and how to uh, control the momentum of either side of the ball. And so the guys have a good awareness of that, and uh, you can make plays on both ends of the floor to kind of combat that. And then a couple of weeks ago, I asked you about the player development coaching staff. Um, you talked about the work they do behind the scenes. I I'm curious about the different perspectives they bring to the table, like all of them coming from different places, some coming from overseas, some coming from long coaching journeys themselves. Um, how, how important is that? You always talk about like the players having different perspectives from their past teams, what they bring to the table that people don't yeah. really, really see. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just got to create an environment where like we all get to the same page, but you got to do it through um, each guy fighting for what he believes in. And so, you know, whether it's a, a team meeting or a coaches meeting, you know, everyone has to, everyone works really, really hard. So you got to have beliefs, you got to have systems, you got to have things that you think are the best. And then we got to come to that together. So the guys, uh, you know, our player development staff, our staff in general is extremely passionate about what they believe in. And they work their asses off studying the game and studying teaching and developing and uh, decision making. And so there's always different ways to do it. And so, uh, we just create an environment to where like everyone has a say to create that ownership, and then you know we just execute it together. It wasn't a dominant start for you guys in either half. Um, how did you guys? How did your bench come in and kind of turn up the volume for you guys? And how 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 much has it helped your consistency level to have a group that when you need energy or 
like just always seems to bring that? Yeah. Um, it's just guys have different roles, do different things. Um, we had a 25 point quarter, so I didn't think we didn't. I thought we got off to a decent start. It just didn't look the way that it looked. So we were defending. It just felt weird, you know, like we missed a couple shots. Uh, but to keep that team to a to three 25 point quarters is, is you know something. But I think just guys, every, everybody on our team has a leadership quality that they bring to the table when they come into the game, right? And so um, we just have different ways to play because we played so many lineups. And when different lineups go out there, we're able to run different plays. We're able to run different defensive coverages. We're able to play just a different style. And so you know what Sam, Al, and Peyton are able to bring is is just that versatility. And uh, you just have to be able to. You know, go to different segments, go to different lineups. You know, uh, throughout games, and I think the guys uh, understand that. KP's had a lot of blocks lately. It seems like he's kind of his rate's gone up, even just verticality stops, especially on like drop offs and second chance. What is he doing better lately, or is it just schematically he's just sitting near the rim more? But what do you think seems different lately? Uh, no, I mean I think he he takes pride in his defense. So I think just making a conscious effort to do it his work early, being in a stance and and just reading the game. I think it. You underestimate the amount of time it takes to kind of play our system uh, to because of the, the spatial awareness you have to have and the different places that you're in, the different matchups that you have. And so I thought he did a great job today navigating uh, the home room matchup, and it, he did a good job navigating the cross matches. Um, but, you know, just learning the timing of, of the help based on where you are is, is something that's really hard to do. And uh, you're, you're, because of his positioning and his work in the film room and, and on the floor, he's able to kind of just have a great feel for that. It's beginning of the year, it seemed like he was doing kind of mostly drop coverage and you started introducing more coverages, mm -hmm. new roles. At what point of the year do you feel like it kind of all finally clicked for him where he kind of, you can take the training wheels off and let him do whatever he needs to do? Uh, that's a good question. I don't really have a date or something in mind. It's just as it continued to grow, it continued to build. And really, it's just the trust and the communication and the spatial awareness to know, like, the, the, the why. Like, you know, we're putting you on this guy. Uh, coming out of a timeout and just feeling the why of why, you know, stuff like that. So I don't have a pinpoint of it, but he has definitely gotten much more comfortable in it. John and Gary said, the last one. Joe, the stretch there, about 17 minutes or so, starting at halftime uh, till you guys rebuilt a, a big lead, it seemed like that was kind of like the process that you've been talking about, about stabilizing after they make a run. You know, they, they threw a punch. Then you started answering, and you 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 know the, you kind of stopped the bleeding, and then you threw your big punch. Mm -hmm. Is that is that kind of the process that you've been looking for? And it just kind of like what what did you see in that from the guys that that made them kind of go through that that whole? Yeah, just awareness. Uh, first of all, it's the understanding of knowing there's going to be a run. I think they shot. Uh, you know, twenty something percent from three in the first half, and you know we. Uh, I forget what the free throw margin was. I think it was like 12 free throws to four. So you have an understanding of like what they're trying to do in the game. Um, but just we didn't have live ball turnovers like in the second half. And so like when you don't have live ball turnovers, teams can't score in transition. They only had, uh, so they had 13 offensive rebounds for the game. They had six of those and they had like six offensive rebounds in the second half. So we were able to take them out of their second chance points. Um, so it's just having an understanding of how teams uh, stay in the game and how teams you know, cut into leads. And it's live ball turnovers for transition, it's offensive rebounds, and it's fouling. And we didn't do a great job on the fouling, but we did a good job on the offensive rebounding. And we, if you keep that team out of live ball turnovers, it's hard for them to get you cross-matched. And that's one of the things they're best at. So it's just understanding how to manage uh, the possessions. And I thought our shot selection during that stretch was really good. And that, to me, is another thing that leads to transition. You know? Joe, uh, early third quarter, you made a substitution. You pulled, I think, Porzingis uh, and Jalen like mm -hmm. three minutes into the third. Uh, eight, eight, twenty. Eight thirty-one. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And then um, Jalen dribbled the ball off his foot like a minute left in the third quarter. It was obviously he was struggling a bit. What's the process of letting him get out of it on his own and not kind of denying him minutes or just you know yeah. just saying okay, it's not your night, Jalen, but letting him make it his yeah. night. Uh, yeah, I mean, we made that sub to change the sub patterns because they changed their sub patterns. Um, so it was another way it was for us to look at something different uh, because we didn't play as much double big in the first half, and then we started the fourth quarter with that with that lineup. So we changed the KP sub pattern, um, and we usually changed Jalen and Jason. So it wasn't because it, it, to me it was more about like um, what Bobby was saying. We're like he's going to find different ways to impact the game. 
Like it wasn't, you know, it may, like I said, it may not have been going quote unquote good for him on the offensive end, but those two plays at the end of the second quarter, those those plays show me that like you're still locked into the game even when it's not going well. And I think that's been the growth of him as a player is like, how can I just dominate the game in different ways? So like those two plays were like, oh man, like, you know, he's locked in. It's just, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't have, he doesn't have the rhythm yet offensively. And then he gets the steal, he makes a couple of shots, he gets layups and even the pass he threw to Drew and the pass he throws to Drew for Drew's corner three, like, you know, because of his buy-in and his ability to impact the game in different ways, you know it's going to come to him eventually. I have two. Sorry. Uh, along that same time period, was there something you were working on with this with that group in the half court offense? Uh, no, no, um, no. And then clinched we talked about this outside but clinched the number one the best record in the nba is that something that you mentioned to the guys do you celebrate that at all with them and and what is the message going forward yeah i mean if celebrating is as much as bring it in shake everyone's hand and say you know don't take it for granted then yeah we celebrated it uh, i think that's important to not take it for, for granted i think it's important to have the gratitude for that uh it's very hard to do um you know we may never be in this position again so you don't want to take it for granted so yeah we definitely talked about it as a team talked about it before the game uh trying to treat this game as like the clincher so that to kind of put that on ourselves to be able to do that i think it was important for us to simulate that um and you know it's just a testament to the guys, and so we should enjoy it tonight. And we wake up tomorrow, you know, nobody cares. So, just gonna get back to work. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.